Hi everyone, my name is Kim Day and I'm the manager of the Earl Team Center at the Enoch Pratt Free Library um, here in downtown Baltimore at the Central Branch. I've worked in teen services for the past uh, 12 years and they're definitely my favorite age group to work with. So I'm excited to talk to you today about the teen brain in the library and how to provide the best customer service. All right, so let's get started. Hopefully everyone can see the screen. Um, so just a little review. These are the basic age groupings, but within and between all these groups, there is a very wide range of maturity levels. Um, this is important to remember when you're planning programs, but also especially when dealing with groups of teens in the library and who think when you're thinking about who you're going to allow into your team spaces and programs if you uh, get a chance to make those decisions. Tweens are always going to want to be where the teens are, but the teens do not usually want the tweens to be there. It's just something to keep in mind. And here we have a lovely picture of um, the teenage brain. So uh, you will learn about this in your pre-work if you haven't already, but there are some important things to remember, especially when it comes to the prefrontal cortex, um, where the functions include planning and reasoning, um, making good decisions, logic, um, and thinking about the future repercussions of their actions. This part is not fully developed until uh, we are about 25 or 26 years old. So that's where you see a lot of the immature, um, high risk um, and sort of testing the boundaries behavior in teens. Um, but the striata in the center here, while not fully developed, is much more, whoops, uh, developed in teens than the prefrontal cortex. And this is something important to remember because we can use it to our advantage um, as far as teen programs and customer service are concerned. Um, teens are very excited by rewards. So it's sort of the um, positive reward system and rewarding the behavior that you want to see, as they say. An interesting tip as well is that due to the brain's rapid changes during adolescence, they are more prone to misreading facial expressions. Remember this too when you're interacting with teens. Okay, so um, we all know that teens are dealing with a lot these days. Um, we're all dealing with a lot these days, um, but added on to the regular pressures that teens go through are um, just some of the things listed here. When thinking about this, we need to remember that every person who walks through the library doors is completely different. They're not all going through the same things in the same ways. So we don't want to make assumptions and we do want to treat each person with the same level of empathy. Not all teens are living through trauma. Um, every day is different for every person and every person has different levels of resiliency. Yes, most teens do have stresses of some kind. In fact, they are experiencing never before seen levels of stress. Mental health issues like depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts among teens rose a nearly 20% from 2006 to 2018. And of course have increased more now with COVID related stresses. So the brain on trauma, when teens are experiencing um, different levels of trauma, and if you're not quite sure what those um, trauma levels might be, you can look up um, the ACEs uh, trauma scale that was done by Kaiser um, some years ago. When the brain is experiencing trauma, it goes into survival mode which means that some parts will literally stop functioning correctly and even stop growing the way they should. 
um, kids who experience high levels of trauma, it has been shown that their, um, their brains are actually stunted. Um, they're not growing at the rate that they should be growing for kids, other kids their age. What this means for us in the library is not that we need to be therapists because we're not, uh, but we are often the first adult a teen may see or feel comfortable opening up to. So we should be trauma informed always and integrate this into our daily customer service. Um, so here, here are some ways that you can help Again, you know, the Be Trauma-Informed is right up there on the top. We should have resources on hand, readily available to give to a teen who's in need or distress. And we should be able to recognize when that is happening. If you can take a mental health first aid course for adults and or teens, this will help you in all of your customer interactions, not just with teens. Uh, you should always know what to say and do. There are specific things you should not say um, to a teen in dis distress or anyone in distress, really. Um, for example, you would never say, you should never say, um, you're not thinking of suicide, are you? Instead, you should say uh, very directly, are you thinking of killing yourself? Be direct and don't sugarcoat the question. When you ask the question directly, it does not give them an out. First, they see that you're not afraid of the topic. You're not implying a stigma to it. And it's a yes or no answer. And then um, last but not least, keep learning and stay informed. Definitely know your community, uh, know what the stresses are in the community, what the teens are going through as much as possible. Uh, this is a quote that I use a lot uh, when I talk to people about customer service to teens. It came from an article a few years ago. Um, and it's just, it really gets to the point of why um, the library is actually the one who needs to change whether that's our policies, our spaces, our staff, our interactions with teens, because the teens are the way they are for, for um, biological reasons and also environmental and social reasons. So how do we balance the needs of other patrons using the library with the needs of teens? Because we all know that that's usually the point of contention. This moves us a little into the advocacy section coming later, but it applies here too. So how we approach and communicate with teens, especially the first time we are interacting with them, will dictate how and when and if they use the library in the future. And they are our future library funders, possibly. Um, so, Understanding how their brain works and why they may be acting or reacting in certain ways makes it easier for us to find ways to communicate with them in empathetic and rational ways. You also definitely want to think about how welcoming you have made your space for the teens if you have the opportunity or the, um, the option to do that in your library are books that uh, act as windows and mirrors to their lives available and are they front and center and displayed to them? Are they being offered to them? Um, not just books, but any of the materials. Just something to think about. And here are uh, quite a few more things to think about when you're interacting with teens. Always, always, always try to be as approachable as possible and stay open-minded. Um, introduce yourself, say, because most teens are not gonna do that first. Uh, say hello, ask how they're doing, offer help. Do not be overbearing about this though. Really pay attention to the body language of the person in front of you and pay attention to those signals and believe them. Listen well, 
be patient, show empathy. This goes along with modeling the behavior you want to see, as they say. Be fair and consistent. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about providing an equity of service. This is a great phrase to use when explaining to teens why they can't do things like yell in the library or throw their backpack across the room. Um, explain to them how it affects others and they're not the only ones in the space. They're not usually aware of this. They're not thinking about it. They're just thinking about themselves, not the consequences of their actions or how it affects others. They biologically can't really do that. Um, some can and they of course can to a point, but it's not shocking to see them not doing this. Have a sense of humor, uh, but be careful with this and don't lead with it. Um, and only if the situation allows and you're already kind of comfortable with the teens you're conversing with. Uh, never ridicule or use sarcasm with teens in any situation. And remember what I mentioned before about them not really being able to judge your meaning by your facial expression. So try to keep as much of a poker face as possible, which I am the worst at doing. So I just try to keep a neutral, um, welcoming face as much as possible. Explain why if they ask. This is super important. Um, I believe this with anybody. I'm a big proponent of it, but especially with teens, you want to be short and direct with them, um, but you also wanna make sure they know that no one is allowed to interfere with another person's right to use the library, including themselves and other patrons. Um, make sure you have a behavior policy in place that it's readily available and everyone is familiar with it. Nobody likes to hear because it's our policy um, but sometimes you do have to say that. However, you should always follow it up with a why. And if you don't know why that policy is in place, you should find out and be familiar with the reasoning. Progressive discipline policies work really well, as do restorative justice practices, if you're looking for a way to um, have a backup to control situations. And if you're not familiar with those terms, and you're working with youth, you really should become familiar with them. There are multiple trainings on um, especially restorative justice practices. And how you interact with them um, affects what the teens tell other teens, and they will do this. Um, and they will start policing themselves. If you have um, consistent policies in place that are followed by any of the staff interacting with teens, once they know how issues are dealt with in the library um, and once they know they are dealt with, they'll start respecting that and they will start policing themselves. Remember that each teen is an individual and work with who is in front of you. And this also goes with um, check your biases. Are you making assumptions about them based on your own personal biases? You should be very aware of what your personal biases are um in any situation and on all levels and make sure that you check those biases when you're working with teens and just the public in general some things that you can ask yourself to um, kind of check yourself as i like to say is and i constantly have this um reel of questioning going in my head would i talk to an adult like this would i talk to a child like this Am I assuming something about this person that they're not telling me or showing me? Am I being fair and am I being respectful? Okay. So those are the main points I wanted to make before we meet for our live session um, in person where we will be doing mostly um, we'll mostly be talking about what you've learned so far um, and discussing different scenarios. So something to think about before the live session is um, the question on the screen, knowing what you know now, in what ways can you improve customer service to teams at your libraries? Okay, so 
take some notes, think about that. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the live session. Thank you.